legendary Mr. Mr. Salino. And like you still got music in certain areas, you know, in Harlem. You know, these old everybody, that's where Salino plays. Yeah, yeah, the Post. Yeah, the post. yeah you've been there, right? That's the spot, man. That's the spot. Harlem is a grassroot place, but the people come from the heart. That's why so many people are moving into Harlem because the way they are treated. At my particular place where I perform at the American Legion on Sundays, and they said, it's Solino's living room. And when I started that 17 years ago, uh, to bring in people from all over the world, it was my dream. And my dream has been fulfilled with a tremendous amount of diversity and uh, many, many international groups. So now it's an international place to hang, to enjoy yourself, and the food is delicious. The Harlem Groove Band is the name band. of my band, yeah. exactly. It, it's what happens is that I don't have to look for musicians that come to me. Uh, hey, Selino, you got uh, anything available? Here's my number. Call me, or I'll call you. That's how it's done. It's done at random. It's not, it's not a planned thing that, again, as I stated before, it's, it's not <coughs> nothing you have to write down and memorize. We do things at random. That's what the music is about. They will ask me the same thing. Uh, what are we going to play tonight? I don't know what we're going to play, but then when I get to the stage, I'll think about it. You know, then it comes out natural. But if you got to get up there and uh, put all this in the front of the paper, uh, everybody had to, come on. If you do it naturally, then it works out better that way. Good evening. My name is Salino. I'm one of the Hammond organ players in Harlem. I've uh, been in Harlem since the late 60s into the early 70s. Up until now, have played and performed in every club just about in Harlem. Uh, I was the last artist who played and performed at Minton's Playhouse, another club called Jocks. I played there for the whole summer. The other one on 132nd, the Club Baron. I, I performed there many, many years. Also, there was Count Bass's nightclub on the corner of 132nd and 7th. 
that's where I went, met Wes Montgomery and George Benson was performing there at the time. Uh, next door to that was uh, uh, Wells uh, Chicken and Waffles. And all of us musicians used to get off from our jobs at nights and meet there at Wells for Chicken and Waffles. We would stay there until 4 and 5, 10 o'clock the next day, just talking. Everybody just talking, their experiences, etc. See, I'm not a school musician, okay? I am a musician who come, who came in from the heart. I, myself, George Benson, Lonnie Smith, we can go on and on and on. We grew up together here. We used to walk the streets all night. Hey, I'll tell you something else. Musicians back in that day, we went to work at 10 o'clock at night and got off at 4 a.m. You, you play 40 minutes on stage and 20 minutes off. They used to come to my house. They called me the ambassador. They called the, the ambassador of Selena Clark's headquarters tonight. I had my Hammond organ in the living room, a set of drums. We'd come up there and jam. And if we didn't know the song, we would help one another. They don't do that today. So we didn't have much money. We're young. Uh, hey, Lonnie, you got some money? I said, give me a dollar, man. George, give me a dollar. Or Joe Blow over here. I can't remember all everybody was there. We pool our resources, go to the corner and get some stew beef, macaroni, tomato sauce, and onion. Put it on a stew in a big pot and let it simmer while we're practicing, jamming, and learning stuff. Those are the people that I miss. That's the kind of element or the environment that I miss today. We don't have it today. Nobody, everybody walks around like, I'm this. Show me the money. All right, it's not always about money, you know? You've got a heart, you just try to rationalize and try to deal with it. on stage one night at Count Basis, right at, I think I came in from Jersey, and uh, we all used to meet there next door with Wells. Count Basie was standing by the jukebox smoking a cigarette with his cap on, and I, hey Wes, what's happening? He said, my boy sounded good up there. I said, hey Wes, let's do me a favor. Let's play the tune. And Lonnie Smith on organ, George was on uh, the guitar, and, Anyway, so Wes walked up, and I walked up with him. When he got up to the stage, George was, had his eyes blade closed and was burning. <laughs> when he opened his eyes up, there was Wes and myself standing. He said, ah! He screamed. <laughs> he screamed, man. Wes scared him to death. Wes gave him a nice compliment. He was like 18, 19 years old at the time, if that. But I'm saying, you know, these are the kinds of things that you, you learn as you're growing in the music business. And it's all about love, peace, and happiness. We used to all help one another. But today, it's a whole different, it's a different ball game. Good or better? As Sasha would say, what a beautiful day. <laughs> what a beautiful world, right? Yeah. <coughs> all right. <laughs> thank you. Thank, oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.